that was a 12 bar blues in A. Um, basically all I was doing was playing what I call Mickey Baker 7th chords through the whole thing. The reason I call them Mickey Baker chords is because studying Mickey Baker, the guitar player, is how I found out about the chord. Up until I started studying Mickers, Mickey Baker, I never seen that chord or ever thought about playing that chord. And then after discovering it through him, I still really haven't found anybody else that's used that chord shape and got talking with friends and things when I found out the chord and you know they didn't use that chord either so I thought you know maybe some more people need will want to see it once I discovered it, you know it started opening a lot more ideas for me you know as far as arpeggio shapes chord shapes and things like that but like I said it's a 12 bar in the key of A and you know myself and a lot of my friends you say an A 7th chord <laughs> Play that. You know, sometimes we'll use that voicing, you know, for jazzy kind of things. That shape. And this shape. But never thought of using this shape as an A7 chord. And this is the Mickey Baker 7th chord that we're going to show you for the one. And we got another shape that we'll use for the 4 and the 5 chord. But this A 7th, you got the G string 12th fret, B string 10th fret, and E string 9th fret. Something I didn't realize or never thought about is it's based off of this six chord shape, which is based on the F minor shape, or F sharp minor shape. It's just taking the top three strings of that F sharp minor. So you got G string, 11th fret, B string, 10th fret, and E string, 9th fret. The G string, 11th fret, is the sixth degree of the scale. And what we're doing is moving that a half step or a step up to the twelfth fret, and that's your seventh. And that's where the chord comes from. Um, people that are new to playing guitar, I get asked this question a lot: is why do you play an F sharp minor shape for a six chord? My well, answer to that is. F sharp is the relative minor to the key of A, which is the key we're in. To find the relative minor, it is just the sixth degree of the key you're playing in. So A, the sixth note of A in the scale is F sharp, and you just play that minor. Now while the F sharp minor shape works for the F for the A6 is this. If you were to take the scale, A major scale, and chart out the notes, and then chart out the F sharp minor scale notes, you'll notice that they're the same notes. The only difference is the A major scale starts at A and ends on A. The F sharp minor scale starts on F sharp, ends on F sharp. So it's the same notes. And when you build the chord, you got the same chord stacked in it that make the sixth of the A. The only difference is is what note you put on the bass. So if you take your relative minor chord which is this F sharp minor starting on the ninth fret if you put the bass note, if you put the F sharp in the bass note we'll use the F sharp that's on the A string ninth fret, put that in the bass you have F sharp minor if you put the A note, it's relative major in the bass, we'll use the open fifth string, put that note in the bass, you end up with A6. So you can hear major sounding, minor sound. So that's why it works. It's because the notes are built, the chords are built on the same basic notes. 
And so that's the A, the Mickey Baker seventh chord. That's for the one chord, so that's the A. Now to get to the four chord and the five chord, which would be the four chord would be D, you go back to the sixth shape. And to make it the D7, Mickey Baker style, you just drop the E note from the or the E string from the ninth fret down to the eighth fret. And then you have your D7. And then to make it your five chord or your E7, you just move that whole shape up two frets. So you right now we got the G string on the eleventh fret. We'll move it to it's on the thirteenth fret. And then you have your five chord. And then you just drop it back down. Now you're back into your seventh chord for your one. And those are the shapes I played through the whole f intro. The only other trick that I played in the intro was going back to what we mentioned earlier with the seventh chord for the one, the A7, is just this A6 with the six raised up or the G string raised up to the 12th fret. And so all I did was walk this chord down. So we already know that we take the G string, walk it down a fret, we earn our A6. And then I move that G string down to the 10th fret. And then moved it down one more time to the ninth fret. The notes on the high E string and B string, you know, never changed. It was just the G string that walked down. And basically all that is, each one of these is... Those are all different voicings of an A chord. And so all I did was walk it down. So... And that was the other trick that I did. Um, there's tons of ideas you can get from this, you know, different arpeggio shapes. Because I use... I'm going to use that arpeggio now. And so hopefully, you know, this will give you some more ideas. Gave me a lot of ideas. And like I said, if you're not familiar with Mickey Baker's stuff, you know, definitely check him out and learn it. And look into him. He's one of the big pioneers of the electric guitar. You know, did countless sessions on popular tunes to the 50s and 60s. He wrote the Mickey Baker books, volumes, volumes one and two, which are you know major important books in the guitar instruction world. So check him out, and hopefully you'll get some more ideas from him.